Hey, hey, folks, look at this. I am back with Erica of the Cricket coming to us from her office in Manchester by the Sea. How are you, Erica? Hi. <laughs> well, pretty quiet week over in Manchester, right? OMG, as wow. the UK say. <laughs> what is going on with the Mac? That's like the heartbeat of the town over there. Let me tell you, my neck is like, my neck is like giving me trouble. I have such whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> the volley going back and forth. I'm like, woo. Um, <laughs> This all started last month, really. It was uh, really recently. It was announced that uh, Cell Signaling, which is a uh, Danvers-based life sciences company that happens to be owned by a Manchester family, right? So they were gonna build a campus. They've always wanted to build a campus in Manchester and this was their chance. They bought 50, 50 uh, acres of property from Anthony Simboli who owned the 50 acres, as well as he also owns the Manchester Athletic Club, which is both a fitness club and the tennis academy. People forget about the tennis academy. It's known nationally, especially with the youth tennis. Yeah, and big news. Yeah, yeah. So it's big news. So basically, when they purchased it, they also announced that they would lease it back to Mr. Simboli to run. And and you got it. You got the feeling that a it would be for a year because most people think a lease is for a year, right? Um, the second thing that they thought was that, you know, it would be to kind of keep things warm and give cell signaling options to play, you know, while they were figuring everything out. They're gonna design, they've got a lot on their plate. They're designing a big thing and they've gotta go before the boards. Um, you've got this club that's been around for 50 years, 50, 50 years with 3000 members. They care about it. The first question was what's gonna to happen to the club? Well, we just learned, you know, 30 days later or whatever it is that they're actually gonna be closing the club. And this was, um, the current management, it was their decision because it came out in an email to members um, that they're going to close the club on the 30th. Now, they're going to, I mean, for people who are members, um, they're going to get refunds, prorated refunds based on their, um, you know, based on their, their membership dues. Um, and then the MAC also has a facility in Gloucester and they can work out there if they want so they can go in there. So that's what's happening. So this is causing quite a ripple, as you could imagine, throughout the people. Now, cell signaling for for you know what it's worth, they hired a consultant that specializes in fitness centers and operations, and that consultant apparently has a short list of people who are interested in taking over operations of that club, and that would be ideal. Hmm. But um, but I don't think it's ideal to let it shut down and then bring in a new operator without saying anything because all those members are going to find other things to do they're going to join the why they're going to you know they're going to go their own separate ways it's much more disruptive to do that than it would be to kind of have a transition that is smooth and and takes from one operator to another but that's not uh, the plan there's a lot we don't know I don't know and we will see what happens we'll see if it continues or if it doesn't but I do know this there are a lot of people who are local who think of that club as family um, and it was really hard for them so yeah I was going to ask yeah what the the reaction's been so far because I mean the the Mac is Manchester the Mac is Manchester that's exactly right and also you know it's funny there was so much momentum coming out of COVID because COVID was such a challenge for all fitness centers but particularly and and I guess not particularly but including the Mac they had to close because the state made them and I we did a big story on them when they were coming out of COVID they had done a ton of investments in the property they used the closure to basically like they had like they they redid their indoor pool, which usually you know usually have to empty it out, and they just used it as an opportunity. They rehabilitated both their pools, they upgraded their entrance, they did all they built pickleball courts. I mean, they did a lot of investments. They they built these um, tents. They had these big event tents outside to make people feel comfortable when they worked out. So they had a whole gym area and workout areas for training outside to make you feel comfortable in you know coming out of COVID. It's like really, it didn't feel like a club that was kind of phoning it in and going, you know what I mean? Right. Just sort of letting it come down. So it feels, it feels like, um, it feels abrupt. Yeah. There. <laughs> yep. September 30th is going to come fast. Hopefully we'll see um, that needle move a little bit before then. So yeah, keep us posted on that, Erica. Uh, more breaking news coming our way from Cape Ann uh, with the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, big surprise. Ken Reel, the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, has decided to retire. I think, you know, it's funny, we we're just talking about COVID. I think COVID really has 
pressurized people in general. And I think that now that we're in sort of this, we're not quite post COVID, but we're in a form of post COVID, let's call it that. I think people are basically just sort of saying, oh my God, you know, that was hard. And, and they're deciding to not put their dreams and hopes on a shelf anymore. Ken Real, who is a transformative CEO at, at the chamber, I mean, he has just decided not because he's doing anything else. He's just decided he wants to spend more time with his wife and his family and they want to travel and he just wants to take it easy a little bit. So he's going to retire. She's already retired and he's decided. So he deserves it. Now let's look at what he's done. He's done a lot. First of all, I would have to say he's been at the chamber, I think, for six or seven years. A little longer than that, yep. Yeah. Okay. So he joined and under his realm, we've had the chamber went over a thousand members and became, I think, the fifth largest chamber in the whole state of Massachusetts. Mm. It's a very, very large chamber. Um, he has recently, I mean, the chamber expanded to include Ipswich. So now it's called the Greater Chamber. So he's expanded it. Yeah. Um, they've had the 100 year milestone. They moved from their old headquarters, which was in that building next door to the Beauport yeah, Hotel. On Commercial Street in downtown Gloucester. Yep. And they moved it down to Harbor Loop, which is now more of a proper visitor center. So, so when somebody comes to Cape Ann to visit and they want to know what they should be doing, they can go there and they can see it. And so it's a lot more high profile. Um, I mean, I think he, there's a lot of amazing things that they've done. So he's stepping down. So what they're doing is they're putting out a search team. They, they, they're already, that's already been going on. Um, and they're doing it properly. I think what they're doing is looking at it as an opportunity to, um, for an energy, a new energy. So I'm curious to see what, which direction they go in. So that'll be, and then, by the way, it'll be for January 1st. It'll be just in time for the Gloucester 400th celebration. Yeah, that's going to be a big year thing for a new you know kind of leader and head to uh sort of be around during that time it's like gonna it's gonna be a fun year and, and a hallmark year so it'll be kind of interesting but yeah. hats off to ken he's done a great job he's he really has so yeah well deserved and he's the kind of guy that puts 25 hours into a day too so no easy task and then yeah the chamber's been awfully prolific the last few years he doesn't sleep he doesn't sleep like if i if i emailed him at four in the morning he'd respond yeah I'm not sure that he should be boasting about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Nice work as always, Erica. Those are two great stories. We'll be sure to follow up with you on both of them. Thanks for your time. We'll see you this time next week. All right. Bye. Interested in a sponsorship? Email sponsor at 1623studios.org to learn more.